Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second act of The Stars of Cabrillo's Stage. In Act Two, we begin our journey back to the stage and our summer 2021 festival season by offering a complete archival production video of our 2012 world premiere performance of Joe Ortiz's Escaping Queens, which was sold out for two consecutive seasons and casts in 2012 and 2013. Follow the directions on the screen or visit our website at cabriostage.com to learn how to view our exclusive archival showing at 3 p.m. on Sunday, December 27th, and again on Friday, January 1st at 7.30 p.m. And give much-needed donations. In this episode 14, we have a pre-show discussion with Joe Ortiz and some of the creative team behind this wildly important autobiographical world premiere. But first, let's take a quick look back at a short video made backstage of our 2013 production hosted by our own Josiah Frampton. Hi, my name is Josiah and I'm one of the stars of Escaping Queens. We premiered this show last summer here at Cabrillo Stage and we're happy to bring it back to you this year with a brand new cast. So uh, let's go into the black box and see what the rehearsals are all about. Escaping Queens performs in the Black Box Theater, which is the smaller stage of Crocker Theater here at Cabrillo College. It holds about 150 seats. Right now we're in rehearsal, but pretty soon we're gonna be building everything out and it'll look beautiful for you. So let's go on inside. Here we are, this right here is our rehearsal area. We have pretty much our entire set built already. Only thing that's not built is where you're gonna sit. Escaping Queens is an original work by local Joe Ortiz, and it chronicles his life as he escaped from Queens, New York, here to California. I play a couple of characters in this show. One character is Manny, who is one of the kids on the block, who helps him bring this story alive. And the other one is Freddy, who is the bookie, and is nice and fun to play. He's a big gangster, so. <laughs> I have a lot of fun playing basically both ends of the spectrum. Lots and lots of fun and then very, very serious. Thanks for taking a peek backstage today with me here at Escaping Queens. Don't... Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode. Uh, we are here with the uh, creative team for Escaping Queens, which we are going to be showing on December 27th at 3 p.m. and on January 1st, our favorite year, 2021, at 7.30 p.m. So we welcome you to watch the show, but before that, we're going to have a little pre-show discussion, tell you where we came from, show you some clips from the show that we did, and have a a good talk about Queens. So we have with us today uh, Andrew Seglio, who is 
a major Cabrillo stage actor, director, segliographer. He does everything for us. Uh, and we have him back again. We have Greg Frisch, who is a uh, eminent director in the area, who is part of the creative genius of this uh, production. And we have Joe Ortiz, who is my Renaissance man. He paints and he writes music and he plays guitar and piano and everything else. And uh, he writes musicals. He is amazing. And he wrote this uh, biographical musical called Escaping Queens, which we produced in 2012 and 2013. And he's here to join us. Welcome, gentlemen. Hi. So, uh, tell us about your life. I mean, basically, the musical is your life. And, you know, give us a short summary of the important uh, points. And then uh, we'll talk about how you came up uh, with a musical to, to uh, portray your life. Yeah, sure, John. It's good to see you. Glad to see you down in, uh, in the tropics there. You deserve it. So listen, uh, here's the thing. We started out, uh, just didn't really, it wasn't gonna be a full-blown musical. We started out doing uh, uh, Smoke, Greg and I, with Lori Rivera, and it was a one woman show. And then when we decided we wanted to do another show, I had an idea for a show called Latina. And it was about a young woman who uh, had a similar situation as myself. And uh, that was an abusive Puerto Rican father. And that was about, <laughs> about the, the, the central focus of it was. And it was gonna be a monologue with songs, uh, really telling my life but through Lori, who can do a much better job. So the beauty of that was- yeah. When you say Lori, Lori- Lori Rivera. Rivera, the star of the show of our first production of 2012. Exactly. And we've been working, Greg and I have been working with her for you know 15 years, uh, almost 18 years. And I've worked with her as a musician. She's, she's one of the best vocalists uh, in Santa Cruz County for sure. Yeah, so when I came up with this idea, Greg said, yeah, let's do it. But what happened is slowly it morphed into, I, I'd call Greg and I'd say, can we add a character? He goes, oh, sure, let's add a character. How about the mother? Lori can play both parts. When we got to the level of trying to figure out if Lori could play my father, we had a problem. <laughs> <laughs> right, Greg? So, right. <laughs> so eventually, here, here I'm making a long story short here. We, I got lucky with meeting you, John, and I pitched you my idea for doing a show at Abbott Square downtown yeah. because the backdrop was perfect and I just I was just stoked. Um, so I pitched this story to you. Uh, and then fortunately, we had a show of smoke in somebody's backyard in Aptos. It was a beautiful, beautiful fundraiser. fundraiser. Yeah, yeah, fundraiser. And you saw it and you fell in love with it and you liked the idea of the festivity of it. And so we didn't really, Greg, we didn't even have a script yet, right, Greg? No. <laughs> we didn't have a script. So we pitched it blind and you fell for it. I kept calling people and saying, John fell for it. <laughs> I didn't know that. So, what are you telling me now? I'm so a flying yeah. sinker. <laughs> so, so we had to we had to come up with a script. And uh, the beauty of it was, is that we, uh, we met Andrew and then Greg said, let's do some workshops. So let's, uh, let's see what uh, Greg and uh, Andrew have to say about the great workshop process we did uh, in my house, in my living room. But before we go there, can I ask you one more question, Joe? Uh, Certainly. You, know, you, you said that it is your biography of your life and, and it is, it is, um, it's a difficult story in a lot of ways and it explains the reason why you're here basically, but um, your music is so happy and full of life. Was, was it a terrible childhood? Was it, uh, uh, were you so lucky? Uh, uh, how was your childhood? How was your life compared to the musical or why does the musical sound to me like I wanna be part of that family a little bit? Well, you know, it was one of these things. It was the, the yin and the yang. There was the great times because it was Puerto Rican Italian and then there was the agonizing times. You got some uh, music that really shows the Puerto Rican and Italian side a lot. Yeah, we tried to do that. And the thing that Greg and I learned through the whole process is we both had similar backgrounds. So when he started writing the script with me, 
uh, he was able to bring in some of his uh, own issues. And then that is being a child of an abusive father. Right. Uh, and I had to, not only did I go through therapy afterwards, I had a terrible case of the hives after the first season. And yeah. one of uh, Gail's friends said, gee, I wonder if Joe uh, had this problem because he showed his whole life in front of the whole community. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it was tough. I remember we worried a little bit. Um, yeah, that's, but your father wasn't so much abusive as he was just irresponsible. That well, you know, abuse, here's what I tell people. Abuse comes in many forms. Yes, it, does. it doesn't have to be somebody being whooped. It can be somebody being neglected, uh, put down, um, uh, ignored. And so we don't really see what abuse is because, because it can be very subtle. And, you know, John, you, you said this at one point when you saw the script, you said, wait a minute, little Joey isn't in this story. Yeah. Where is he? Yeah, where is said, he? Well, John, I'm afraid to put him in because I don't know what's going to, you know, I don't know what's going to rear its head. And so my original idea of little Joey was he was like a, a four-year-old kid and he was carrying out around a milk crate. And what he would do is he'd put the milk crate down and watch these crazy people go <laughs> their, their uh, uh, contortions. And then gradually he grew into a character. And fortunately we found uh, uh, Wyatt Bernard, who was an ideal uh, uh, character. <laughs> Getting wrapped up into into the process, even when I think about it now, was was very sudden. It just kind of it kind of came out of the blue and 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 fell into my lap. And I remember, um, you know, those early stages when I got a chance to hear a lot of the music and I got a chance to meet with Joe. Um, you know, I didn't get a chance to meet with Greg right away. Um, but I had heard amazing things about him. Obviously he'd worked in the area, you know, for many, many years uh, before that, but you know, I had a very similar reaction, um, uh, in, in, in which Joe was describing that him and Greg came from a similar background, um, with obviously the Italian, the Sicilian background that I come from, um, <clears throat> was very strong. Um, and a lot of it really made sense to me. I mean, right down to the Sicilian gangster. I mean, you know, that character particularly reminded me of some of my um, family members <laughs> in the greater generation. But the process was, the, the first thing that really drew me to it was um, the music, because that was really the first exposure I had to it. And still to this day, these tunes are some of the most beautiful melodies, some of the catchiest things. I mean, how many times I catch myself walking up my stairs and humming, it's over and done? Or how much um, more often in my life do I use the phrase, go on, get out of here? Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> you, you know, I mean, um, uh, the tune California, still one of the most beautiful, beautiful melodies. Um, so that's something that really drew me in. And also into the fav my favorite part of these ginormous processes of putting a show up, um, which is those early stages when you're making these amazing discoveries. And you have people like Joe and Greg who have clearly been working on this for some time. 
and really allow you to they just kind of put it in your lap and they say, well, what can you do with it? And they want you to explore it and, and, to, and to just try other things so they can then grab ideas from that and, and it just spawns into this beautiful thing. Because um, there's three levels of, of massive vulnerability and challenges that come uh, with putting up something like this. Uh, not just something that's semi-autobiographical, but first thing is getting it out of your brain and onto the page. That's one challenge in itself. The second is then getting it up off of the page and into your ears, hearing it, getting other people to play with it. And that brings in a whole nother set of challenges. So brand new questions, you find out what works and what doesn't. And then the next thing is getting it from your ears off the page and onto its feet. And then by that time, the story has just taken on a life of its own. And you're kind of just grabbing at everything that you've kind of, all the dust you've kicked up and trying to fit the, the, the best pieces together to create this beautiful story. So at that point, we got introduced to Greg and you guys started developing the show. So Greg, tell us where it went from there. Well, the the journey from the very beginning was this incredible dance between facts and truth. So all of those discussions, all of that work we did as a group kept going back from, well, these are the facts. Let's try this out. This song relates to the facts of this event. And then it would go around and around and with more and more input, more and more input, what came out was, well, what's more truthful? Where's the truth of this song? The truth of this moment? Right. And as that truth came out, the power of the piece began to grow and grow and grow. And the individuals contributing to this process, and we had an astonishing group, an astonishing group of fabulous people. You had... Um... You had two pianists that you were working with, Max, and um, was it the one that you'd worked with for years? I can't think Marshall. of Marshall. Marshall, right? Yeah. Otwell. Yes, very good. Amazing jazz uh, piano player. Amazing. Yeah. Phenomenal. So as, as we would, went through song by song, moment, event by event, this discussion kept coming back to, well, what's the most powerful and important piece of that event? Right. And then it got it got hotter and hotter and more dangerous and more exciting and more powerful and more joyful. Your reaction to how happy all those songs were yeah. that came out of the joy of the healing of the song of the songs and of the peace. And so that the healing ones like California which were so moving at the at that time was came from how much truth was coming out in that process. Right. Flight 52 to Los Angeles, now boarding at 824.
sky is blue. I'll see you the again. And a lot of times in a creative process, putting a show together, you get a lot of great ideas, but you're really short on heart and truth. Right. And there's the challenge. And this crew, this gang, just kept stepping up and stepping up and opening their hearts and speaking out and saying, that doesn't make any sense. Right. It doesn't seem real. So we could say that basically the arc of the show obviously is escaping Queens and coming to California. So writing a tune like California and the way that it's presented with its happiness and joy is like a, uh, you know, cross the river Jordan, you know, it's heaven. Yeah. Right. So uh, well, is that feeling with and, California and the cost of that transition in order to get to Kevin, you have to die. Yep. And your friends have to die. And if you're going to get to heaven, crossing over Jordan. So it's both. Yeah. In California, it's I'm going to miss the people I love in Queens. And now we're going to go on to a better place. Right. So it, it's the sadness and the tears of the loss and the joy of the success in that transition. Yes. And you got it right to the core of it. Okay, so then we had to produce it. You guys did write a script, apparently. No, I remember. <laughs> the was a constant yeah. work. We yeah. had a long discussion. The first show we did, we produced jointly, and we had a long discussion about this is the deadline. <laughs> no more writing because we were worried about the actors. We were worried about uh, that they had to learn too much or that they were learning on the fly and they just, uh, and it was unsafe for them. I don't know. Uh, and what do you think about uh, the step into the reality of actually uh, rehearsing these actors? Oh, well, the, those deadlines, I was, had two hats on, one, one as writer and the other as a director. So I keep switching back and forth, but ultimately, ultimately I knew at, at the point when we put the hammer down and said, okay, that's it. Then we went into the technical part of it. So everything had to be meticulously choreographed, set, lights, sound, all of the cues, the length of all of those transitions had to be absolutely adhered to, meticulously. It couldn't be changed. Pardon? And couldn't be changed, you know. That exactly. Was exactly. And so I was as, as adamant to the fact that that was not going to change as I was wanting. Oh, I wish I could fix that. Yeah, just one word changed <laughs> or whatever. But the, ham yeah, the hammer was, nope, this is how it is. It's in black and white. The cues are in, the timing's in, the score's in, and this is how it is. Uh, we, we were lucky to get a uh, stage reading at Queens Theater, which we went, we got a, uh, a cast from the East Coast there. It went really well. You know, nothing came of it, but we learned a lot. A few years later, we did uh, a festival in New York at uh, uh, Producers Theater. That our cast was a little bit iffy because sometimes people drop out, you know, it's tough. Uh, another year later, we did a show at Hill Barn, a couple of uh, uh, concert readings that went really well. All along the way, Andrew was back and made huge contributions in that Hill Barn, in right. that Hill Barn show. And it was, this was a major, a major event at Hill Barn in the development of the script. It, the script made enormous progress in that reading. Was that after our shows? Yes, this was. Oh, yeah. Everything was after your shows. Everything was, it, it, was, it was our way of just trying to fine tune uh, the story because we felt that people liked the music, the music was telling the story. And uh, the, the final, 
I think we should go right into this. The final show that we did was, I think it was two or three staged concert readings uh, at uh, Shelton Theater. We had a pretty good cast, but we were still unsure about the final climactic scene. And I, I want Greg to tell uh, real briefly how that came to pass. And then I'll end that up with how the, the great revelation it was for me. The, the journey has been throughout all of these years. Whose story is this? Whose story is this? And over and all, over and over, there was always confusion about whose story it was because ultimately it was the story of this whole family, right? It was the family story until incessantly that question kept coming up, needling us and needling us. It did at the Hill Barn show again. Whose story is this? Who is the one who, is the one who thrives and succeeds? Mm. And it kept coming back. It's got to be mama's story. It's got to be the mother's story. Right. And the conflict was always, the fact was that in real life, the husband, the husband, the father kept coming back and back and back. And his mother was never really allowed to be the victorious one. But we came back and what struck me to the core was that Joe, Joe was the one that thrived and was the success in that family. He was the one that took home the family's goals and dreams. It was him. But we couldn't do it with little Joey. It had to be mama. Yeah, Joey she had to win. He had no control. Right, right. She, she had to win. And the only way for her to win was to make sure that the father would no longer torment the family. Which is escaping. Yes, right. And yeah. that was the escape, the real escape. And so at the end, we got, we were there in Shelton, Shelton Theater. I think it was two days before the, the beginning of the shows. And we realized the actors who were singing the final climactic song, the daughter and the lover, the Estelle, his lover, yes. couldn't do the music, could not perform that song. Right. And in that, in that dilemma, I was clear, okay, this has got to happen. This is the time that mom is going to win and she's going to win by getting rid of him, by getting rid of the husband, and here are some songs. Go back to pick a couple of songs to weld them together and let her win. And the songs, then Max and Lori and Joe and I put our heads together. Okay, we, we got to open tomorrow in this reading. We got to have an ending. Wow. It was beautiful because it started, the whole workshop process started with Andrew helping us workshop, but the reality is it came back to a workshop because basically Greg said, take some lyrics from this song, lyrics from this song, and lyrics from this song, put them together on paper. So I did that. I gave them to Greg. Greg fine-tuned those lyrics a little bit. And once we had them, we handed the lyrics to Lori and we handed the lyrics to Max in the theater before the performance and they workshopped the tune, they arranged it and we put it in the show that night and it brought the house down. It absolutely brought the house down because it was, well, first of all, we had a great audience that night and you know how that is, Andrew. You, sometimes you get, and you know how that is, Greg, and you know how that is, John. Some nights, you know, you might have a great Thursday night and you think you're going to have a great Friday night, but you don't. They don't show up. So because we had that great audience and because everybody was going along with the story, this song just became the climax that was, oh, it is Mama's story and it's her triumph that saves the family from 
this abuse. And so it was kind of like a mystical experience, especially yeah. for me, because you know what? My mother was the one who made the decision to yeah. kick my father out. She made that decision because she had to do it for some reason. I, I probably blocked out what the abuse was that spurred that, but I think it, my mother made the decision. And so, I don't know, the, the journey is complete for me, although I wish we could get, you know, get uh, one more production under our belt, John. Yes. <laughs> we should take this thing home, you know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway, there you go. Next time, you go. next time we do Escaping Queens, it's going to be a completely different show, is what you're saying, than yes. what our audience is going to see this month. And not completely different, but new ending is pretty big because the old ending was pretty spectacular, too. Yeah, in fact, Gail saw the, the, the previous ending when we watched it, uh, the two, uh, 213 version, we watched the, the show. And she saw it, oh my God, this is a great ending. And I said, really? Well, we took it out. <laughs> <laughs> and then I called Greg and I said, can't we have two endings? <laughs> Put the first one in and then it won't take because you know what? My mother kicked my father out of the house six times <laughs> and he kept coming back. Yeah. And that, was, that was the abuse. It's like a bad president. <laughs> Uh -oh. <laughs> well, I don't know what that's like. <laughs> that sounds like an ending. <laughs> yeah, we don't know what that's like at all. Well, anyway. oh, yes, you could have both endings, but we'd have to have an act three. There yeah. you go. Right. <laughs> but, but you know, if, if I can't say, I think that that's what's so incredible about it is, is that it's the answer almost, when you look at it now, it seems so obvious. Mama was always the, the, the center of everything. But again, the process and... <laughs> It, both of these gentlemen, and particularly Greg, to have such a, a, an understanding and a respect for process, how things grow and things change. And they're not afraid to venture outside the lines a little bit when they can. And so then you, that's, you have these revelations. And I can't wait to hear it because I've never heard this ending. And it just, it makes so much sense to me. It sounds, it sounds really fantastic. We'll and try so to happy. dig it up. We'll, well, we have it on yeah. video. Yeah, we have it on video. We'll try to dig it up. All right. Oh, I would love that. We've got less than a minute. So I want to thank you gentlemen again for uh, talking to me today. It's really been wonderful. And I can't wait to see the archive. Thanks again. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank you, John. Thank you, John. So never mind. Get out of here. Don't want to know. Don't want to hear. Whatever they say goes in one ear. And out the other. I'm not going to listen. Just let it go. Get out of my face. It's just so much to bear. The, the family disgrace. You better not dare. Tell, Tell no one, one out there. there our family secrets. Keep your mouth shut, Mr. Weinstein. Whatever we do, don't you ever dare say. Keep it locked up inside. Sounds like constipation of the brain, if you ask me. <laughs> it's so much better that way. Don't, don't go gossip, gossip on the street no more. Shut up. Don't talk. Be sure not to miss the viewing of the archival production video of our 2012 world premiere performance of Joe Ortiz's Escaping Queens. Follow the directions on the screen or visit our website at cabrillostage.com to learn how to view our exclusive archival showing at 3 p.m. on Sunday, December 27th, and again on Friday, January 1st at 7.30 p.m. And give much needed donations. Join us next time on New Year's Eve when we talk to Kikau Alvaro as we look at our 2012 production of Anything Goes on the Stars of Cabrillo Stage. <laughs>